about four keys that are responsible for restoration are you ready number one the first key that is truly responsible for restoration if you want god to restore moments time or whatever it is in your life the first key is self-examination the power of self-examination second corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5 it says to examine ourselves whether we be in the faith prove your own selves examine yourself can i tell you this when people are downcast they do not take the personal responsibility of saying listen why am i here this is not self-condemnation you have to learn to sit with yourself why are things not working for this family why is it that i have been in lagos for 10 years and i've only celebrated the testimony of others there is something about the responsibility of thoughtfulness that most believers do not submit themselves to you have to sit down and ask yourself honest questions the bible says examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith luke chapter 15 from verse 17 i'll just cut it and start from verse 17 this is a very classic story that that demonstrates responsibility and the power of self-examination this is the story of the prodigal son the bible says when he came to he never said the holy ghost spoke to him uh -uh. you it is within your power to come to yourself sometimes you see pain is a gift because it can bring you to a point where you come to yourself it is true when things happen too cheap when you keep reaping harvest for seeds you did not sow there are many of us who have been shielded by the love of others and it has never given us an opportunity to examine ourselves whether you sow or not someone's harvest he will share it with you and chances are excellent that you can think that because you are receiving a harvest outsourced from another you don't see the value of seed time you don't see the value of anything because someone else is shielding you the power of self-examination you must learn this have a time where you stay alone with god lock yourself go somewhere and say lord I, I am not happy at the way my life is going. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 1 says, It says, Through desire, a man, having separated himself, he seeketh and intermeddleth with wisdom. Once you separate yourself, you have separated yourself from foolishness too. The moment you take the pain of separating yourself, it is wisdom you will encounter. Are we together? Yes why is my business not working why is my spiritual life not working i've been born again for 10 years but i barely know anything about the principles of scripture why is it that i'm not attentive in church you have to examine yourself and ask yourself very honest questions the power of self-examination number two what is the second key that makes for restoration brokenness psalm 51 and verse 17 brokenness do you know what brokenness is brokenness is a state of recognition recognizing your inadequacy your inability to help yourself unassisted that if god does not come into this equation of my life to help me my best will still be limited brokenness many people want god to restore them restore their dignity and their honor but that sense of self-righteousness and pride is still alive there in the story of the prodigal son listen the father did not come to meet the rebellious arrogant son the father came to meet a son that was already repentant and was ready to be restored are we together brokenness is very powerful you walked out on your ceo and you lost your job you are secretly hoping you will get back to the job 
but you do not have the humility to be broken to admit that i was wrong and somehow you are hoping it does not work that way brokenness is not um brokenness is not something you assume it is a state that everyone around you will know this person is broken there are many people today if they were broken enough they would have re relationships restored together with the privileges if that boy sat down there the prodigal son i presume if he stayed one more year in that foolishness he would have died because he was already close to death he said how many hired servants does my father have and i'm here feeding with the swine i will arise and i will go to my father and when i meet him i will say father i have sinned i won't say father it was just my mind my mind was playing some emotional games call it what it is i have sinned against you i have sinned against heaven the character of brokenness is that it admits without shame are we together pastor i am sorry i offended you this is not the way it should be it was carelessness i take full responsibility that's brokenness the bible says a broken and a contrite heart oh god thou will not despise many 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 people are unable to experience restoration in their lives because they are not genuinely broken genuinely broken there are many children who would get back the support of their parents their sponsors their loved ones if only they communicate brokenness in truth and in sincerity is that true brokenness number three what's the third key that makes for restoration knowledge 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 Proverbs 11, I, I believe verse 9 says, Through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Isaiah chapter 60 says, Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. You arise and you shine when your light comes. Knowledge. Knowledge of what? Not knowledge of your situation or knowledge of what you want. Knowledge of what it takes. Listen most people know what they want they even know what they don't want but they do not have the knowledge of what it takes is that true so this is what i want i desire this so desperately and this is it here the bible says that this should be given to me but you must know have the requisite level of spiritual illumination that takes you from prophecy to experience otherwise you will keep wishing things that will never never manifest in your life it takes more than knowing what god has said it takes more than knowing what god has told you to have it is that true you must find out the the participatory condition he has connected to that promise you're acting in keeping with the condition is your demonstration of faith that faith is not just believing alone believing is part of the process of faith faith is the name given to the action of obedience you take as a sign that you believe god i don't know if i've demonstrated it here but say for instance i call this gentleman and i say come and pick this you see don't come but just say you are coming say you are coming look at this shout it again say i'm coming 2018 say you are coming 2019 say you are coming 2020 the promise is still there waiting you have not manifested faith you've just been wishing that you will have it and someone will come in 2022 my brother walk and come and collect it and you are wondering where did you come from uh -uh. it is the person who took the action of faith lord i'm going to build a house you've never found out where there's an empty land you are waiting for your bank account it does not cost money to go and know where land is and say lord i have seen the land 
and someone who came from nowhere now the person is roofing his house and you are wondering faith is not just saying what god has said faith is doing what it takes as prescribed by scripture to make what god has said be manifest in your life are we together thank you knowledge we need high level spiritual illumination let me challenge you i want you to go back home and write a list of all the areas in your life where you have not seen the word of god produce the kind of result that you desire knowing that god is glorified in your results remember what the bible says it says let your light so shine before men that they may see god wants men to see because in seeing the result that proceeds from you they will glorify god hearing is our father glorified john 15 and verse 8 when ye bear much fruit not little fruit sustainable predictable results brings glory to the name of the lord are we together galatians 1 25 it says and they glorified god in me they glorified god in me the excellency of the workings of the word in and through your life it compels all and sundry to know that jesus christ is lifted and glorified in and through your life god is counting on everyone here as a membership counting on individuals that through your life your life will become a living epistle someone will look at your life this year and anything he did not understand in the morning he will look at your life for the explanation if he if he read his bible in the morning and he saw that god was fit that god is faithful and he did not get that bible study god will tell him look at this pastor as an explanation a clarification to what you have learned that's what it means to be a living epistle your life explains what people do not understand about god when god says that he can favor men if they say lord i i, I is it real that you can favor men he personifies his word embodies it in an individual so that you become a, a demonstration of it nicodemus came to jesus by night and said rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from god for no man can do these things except god be with him there are certain results that are not within the realm of men when you see men manifest that result it it, it was outsourced from a dimension that is higher than this human dimension and i'm praying for someone here the frequency of results that you will begin to walk in you will be the first person surprised by your results in the name of jesus christ listen do not allow anybody downplay the place of results your christian experience will remain a frustrated experience if you do not have genuine notable results gentiles will not come to you they will come to your light their kings will not come to your light they will come to the brightness of your rising preachers here whether in this ministry or those who came this is the year to contend for high levels of spiritual power high levels of wisdom the kind of wisdom that is connected to mighty works business people this is the year to operate at a dimension that your contemporaries will come to you and say we have discerned that God is with you believe what I'm saying results are powerful results can evangelize they, there are there are there are certain messages that only results can preach the bible said the greek seek for a sign the world is tired of vain explanations from christians one genuine result in the name of the lord can bring to end decades of confusion
knowledge we rise in this kingdom by knowledge there is what you must know there is what you must know to reign and to excel there is what you must know to remain on fire there is what you must know to access the spirit of wisdom there is what you must know about kingdom influence there is what you must know about longevity there is what you must know about wealth and abundance there is what you must know about dominion over systems and structures there is what you must know about relationships the question is which aspect of your life are you short Go back and become a spiritual archaeologist. He said, for everyone that seek it, find it. Jesus gave a parable. We are praying now. He gave a parable and he said, the kingdom is likened to an individual who lost a coin in a room. The coin means a treasure. The power to make purchases was missing in the room he knew that he, that coin is somewhere the first thing he did was he brought light the second thing he did was to carry a broom and started sweeping i know this breakthrough is somewhere in scripture i don't know what verse i don't know what principle but i know in scripture god lifts i know in scripture god restores i've not understood the dynamics you are sweeping sweeping with messages sweeping with prophetic words and the Bible says she found it and she rejoiced. Can I tell you this? Every time you claim you have found something and it does not show in your life, you are yet to find it. I found your word and it was a joy and a rejoicing to my soul. Listen, light is powerful. Light is powerful when you find this thing you have found it believe me listen you can gain mastery in the spirit you truly can gain mastery in the spirit he said he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully move past the realm of trial and error shadow boxing and hoping that one thing or the other will work you can rise to a level of predictability in your christian experience that you wake up in the morning and you know you will be favored today you know paul said but i know whom i have believed he said i am persuaded knowledge knowledge you must submit yourself through the labor dimension of faith to access knowledge no matter how great a door is there is a small key that opens it and you can put that key in your pocket but if that key is missing you can stand before that door from morning till night but then if you find the key that is knowledge you need understanding because there are times that you can have the key and the dynamics of opening that door some doors you turn once some doors you turn twice for others, you turn and do some other things. The Bible says, in all thy getting, get understanding. Knowledge tells you what to do. Understanding tells you how to do it. Knowledge says, give. But understanding tells you how to give in a way that prospers you. Knowledge tells you, pray. Understanding tells you how to pray to get results knowledge says fast understanding tells you the kind of fast that has been commanded it's good to have knowledge but in addition to knowledge have understanding understanding brings stability to your life my time is up number four the last and then we'll pray be sensitive now i want to pray for you the fourth key that activates restoration is the prophetic. Hmm. <laughs> Someone's life is changing. Isaiah 42 and verse 22. 
Isaiah 42 and verse 22. Never forget this scripture. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey and none deliver it. Read with me. They are for a spoil and none say it. Restore. Restoration does not just happen. Someone must say it. None say yet, restore. None say yet, restore. In 2 Kings chapter 6, when you read the first seven verses very quickly, 2 Kings chapter 6, this was a very interesting rendition. The Bible says, the sons of the prophet said unto Elisha, behold now the place where we meet with you is too small. So they, it was a desire to advance. Next verse, it says, let us go we pray thee unto jordan and take thee every man a beam and let us make a place where we may dwell and he answered and said go ye verse 3 and one said be content i pray thee go with thy servants and he answered and he said i will go verse 4 so he went with them and they came to jordan and cut down wood but as one was felling a beam the axe head fell into the water he cried and said alas master for it was borrowed wise man many people would try to jump inside the river and die there no there are certain results that you cannot just get it by yourself god has positioned people within the body that in addition and in connection to your faith this man cried and said alas master i'm in trouble i borrowed this the prophet said where fell it and he answered he showed him the place and he cut down a stick and cast it thither and the iron did swim the iron did swim the finances that left you did come back because you see everything that left you is still on earth under a certain condition it can come back this is true please listen to me when the prophetic is administered outside the boundary of scripture it just becomes a display of ignorance with no potency and power but when the prophetic is administered within the jurisdiction of scripture it works wonders listen to me my beloved people there is a dimension of growth and restoration and excellence that only the prophetic can bring to your life when you lose money it's not another business that will bring the money back no you will only waste your time and keep digging deeper it is the prophetic that will bring it back it may look like a physical structure brought it back but it is the prophetic the economy of a whole land had gone down and a prophet said by this time tomorrow he gave it the timing and by the morrow there was restoration i saw this vision and i knew that the lord wanted me to teach and charge and prophesy restoration listen to me god can restore men god can restore things and god can restore time do you know how god restores time he does not take you backward he takes what was in your yesterday that should have happened that did not happen he brings it into your tomorrow are you getting the point now you have to understand how god restores because god does not exist in time he does not even exist in eternity because eternity is time it's just time without end infinite summations you no know, summations of infinite dispensations god dwells in a realm that is neither eternity nor time so there is nothing like past present and future with god that reality is only given to men to help us relate with god there is no such thing as a future there is no such thing as past God's realm is now. That's it. 
so your yesterday is as clear and real to God as your tomorrow there is no difference are we together so he can move something that should have happened in year 2000 2015 maybe at that time when that prophetic word would have come you were not sensitive God can move it into January and February and make it happen in your life this is restoration in one minute wherever you are I want you to pray very passionately and cry based on this word ask the Lord to bring restoration don't waste this moment go ahead and pray all the centers that are following overflows those following online here is your chance to contact the grace that makes for restoration lift your voice and pray Thank 